I was just working on the demo for my game Hexagod here, and I had a realization that there's something that I've been doing in all of my serious projects. That's projects that I want to take to the finish line or I'm working on for more than a couple months, which is basically just everything except for like game jam projects. And that is creating a debug tool up here. I cannot tell you how useful this little panel has been in testing things. Typically speaking, the way I implement these is that I just put all of the kind of the common things I want to test or do, or in this example, give myself like a God mode to gain a bunch of food down there or wood. So I don't actually have to play through the game, placing resources and, and, and earning cards and like going to my shop and buying these cards. Like if I had to, every time I went through and changed something, go through and just collect resources. If this debug panel just showed me the resources I wanted to grab, it would save me so much time because I can just go through and grab all these um, the resources I need. And then if I want to spawn something in like an evil hex, which is what I've been working on with the combat here, if I want to go ahead and spawn in a devil, sorry, demon, it's a demon in my game. I don't want to be so religious -y. Uh, it is called Hexagod, so I guess it's by definition religious -y, but in my head, I want it to be more like age of mythology and less like modern religions. And so demons and you're the hexagod more like think like a zeus figure in my head than like a jesus figure that's beside the point that's not why you're here why you're here is to learn more about my debug tool and why i use it and how i've implemented it and then i use godot to do my project development and and something like this could be incredibly useful in other engines i think from a high level the concepts are going to be the same but maybe the implementation of exactly how you make a panel like this is going to be a bit different and honestly speaking, the debug tool here in this panel that I create is really something that happens during the prototyping phase. So as I'm building a project, it kind of becomes this way for me to test systems without having them fully built out. And I think that's a good philosophy. And for me, it's helped me create a structure of a project that's more decoupled so that when I come into this project and let's say, I want to draw a card. Instead of having mechanics in the game for drawing a card, I can simply go and click draw a card, come down to this method, and then I have a way uh, to reference my hand. I have a method on there that says draw card, and I have a global method for my card manager that allows me to get a random card. So by kind of as I'm implementing new system, I think, is this a common system? Is there a button I want to be able to press as I'm testing this to simply just get a card? Or maybe it's to deal damage to the player, or it could be simply, I have a button down here that says lose the game. So if I wanna test my game over state, instead of having to go through and find my game over situations, I can basically spoof the game over state and go to this method and see, oh, I have a method on my main, uh, the main root node of my project. So I say main dot game over, and then I set in false for, then it is a fail state. So if I kind of keep thinking every time I do that, how could I test this really quickly? It allows me to create, um, take my spaghetti, my big pile of spaghetti, and I can separate it into little plates of spaghetti, almost like hors d'oeuvre spaghetti plates, and I can test out each individual pile of pasta separately to see if it works in the context. So I hope that that kind of from a high level, that's where my brain is at when I'm thinking about making these debug panels. And then from an implementation perspective, I'm basically just creating buttons. Your engine might have different methods of creating them and hooking them up. In Godot, you have these nice little signals. So I say on button down, I can go to my draw card button. I can go to the method. I can connect this and then go ahead and in this method, say the functionality of what, what I want to do. I then have export variables for the different core systems I want to do. So in this project, it's actually just four core, um, four core other nodes or other scripts you can think about that I want to reference. I have a spawner, a hand, a game board, and main. Export simply means that when I then go put the debugger into my main node here, which is the root node of my project, I can then specify those by clicking on them and then going ahead and grabbing the reference to the node. And that way it kind of tightly tightly connects the, the specific node that I'm referencing into the debug panel and makes it a bit easier. From there, you'll notice that when I run a project, the debug panel doesn't show immediately. I believe I have a, a functionality that automatically hides it if it's shown, but if it's not, 
I then have a way to toggle this on and off. And I do that by going to my input map and having F1 set up for toggle debug here. So then if we flip back into the debugger, I have an input method. Again, your mileage may vary for different engines. In Godot, that's called input. And I can check to see if we have set is live equals to uh, equals to false. That means I'm not in a live version. I'm in a testing version of my project. I check to see if the action press was toggle. And then I simply just use an exclamation point to toggle the debugging panel. Either if it's not visible, it becomes visible. And if it's visible, it becomes not visible. Air from the future here. If you want to support the channel any further, I don't take sponsorships on this channel because they feel weird and I haven't found one that quite works. So if you want to support the channel any further, go check out Hexagod. Make sure you play the demo. Give me that feedback. Help me make this great game great. And at the end of the day, go hit that wish list button. It's going to help push the game to more people, get me more wish lists so that when the game goes live early next year, we can get a bunch of people to play it and it can help create this channel so it's self-sustaining and I don't have to take sponsorships because I can just make games and share that progress with you. I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. And this is the key part here that I kind of want to impress upon you is that I have a export variable on my main called is live. And this is my toggle to control if anybody can show if anybody can show this debug panel, because I don't want my players to typically have access to like these God mode tools, although there could be a reason that that could be a fun thing. Maybe that could be something a mod developer, if if a mod developer could even understand the spaghetti code, um, maybe they can make a mod on, on Steam Workshop or something like that. I have no idea how to do mod support. Anyways, I have this is live checkbox, and I can check this to basically say the panel can or can't show. That way, Simply put, when I want to make a build to Steam, I can check this box and it'll go ahead. I have a, something very similar for is demo, which basically locks out non-demo content. And um, ultimately, is this a good solution? I don't know. It's a fine solution. It perfectly works. Have I forgotten to check these boxes before I push something to Steam? Absolutely. Will I forget again in the future? <laughs> yeah, I will forget again in the future. Like, it'll absolutely happen. Does that mean I should make a more robust system that checks to see if we're in li a live mode or if we're connected to Steam? I don't know, maybe. But, like, it it's simple. And simple things can work really well. They can make sure the the bloat of your project stays low and, and that you can just run fast and make stuff work. And that's kind of what this debugging tool has done for me. It's allowed me to quickly get a system implemented into the game, test to see if it works without having it connected to every other system, without every other thing in the game. And so that if I want to go ahead and start testing out and spawning different things in my game, I can go ahead and do just that. If I want to spawn an extra villager without having to go find a villager card, I can do just that. If I want to uh, draw random cards, I can click this button and draw a bunch of random cards. If I simply want to have... Uh, a bunch of resources out there for my villagers to go and collect, I can do that as well. So I think one of the really more... Over the course of all my projects, I've done I've done a debug panel like this first when I built Chess Survivors, and now I'm doing it a lot with Hexagod here as well. And I think the kind of the, the, the takeaway from doing this is it's helped me make my projects better. It's helped me make them more modular. It's helped me make them work quicker. And it's probably saved me a lot of time. One of the drawbacks of a debugging tool like this, as you can see, if I started having 50, 60, 100 different little buttons, it could be a bit hard to find the specific button. But you can still make incredible games that have hundreds of debug buttons. Look at RimWorld. RimWorld has a huge, huge menu full of buttons you can press. You can also do something more like a console command, kind of like Sims back in the day where you could type in Rosebud to get a hundred uh, a hundred Sim bucks, or let me know down in the comments what the Sim money was called. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, but you could also go in a little bit more complex solution. If you have a more complex game that's gonna have a lot more things, you could also you could also probably do some sort of console command or you could customize your debug panel. And so instead of having uh, plus 10 victory points, maybe it's an input button or a slider that says how many victory points do you want to grant? And you could have more fine tuned control. For me, simple has worked perfectly fine. You can always improve these debug tools over time and it's gonna save you and maybe your QA testers or, or whoever is playing through your game so much time if they can just go and get to the point they wanna test without having to play through your entire game to get there. 
Let me know what you think down in the comments about a debug panel. Is this something that's helpful for you? If you haven't checked it out yet, go check out Hexagod. It is super fun. I'm cooking on uh, combat version 2.0. It should be ready this week or next week. So I'd love if you'd make sure you wishlist it. Play the demo. Give me that feedback. Help me make this a great game. And until next time, I've been Aramis. I'll see you around. Bye-bye.